Okay, I've cut out my, this is my front, and, um, and I'm going to stitch the darts. So I'm just going to fold it in half. These are right sides together, and I'm going to just follow that little mark um, that has been cut out. Follow it right up. Keep stitching because that will lock your ends. And so I have a little tied end now. That's all I need to do. Don't clip that. It'll just be inside. And so uh, now I've done the, the chin and the, and the uh, nose. And now I'm going to fold this one the same way, meeting that little V part that I cut out and I'm going to stitch that again stitching on out and you could cut these a little bit at least you wouldn't need to have them quite that long but don't clip them right up to the edge because that's a knot for you that keeps so I'll just clip you know like to right there right there so they're not long strings okay so now I have my front finished here is my nose up here and my chin and that's three darts <clears throat> now I'm going to take this <clears throat> and place gonna put that aside actually and I'm going to take my my uh, lining uh, and I'm going to stitch down this part that I pressed away on both sides Okay, now this is the inside, and so I'm going to also do the same thing that I just did. I can see my rotary cutter didn't get right to the end of that fabric. Okay, so now uh, this, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start from the tip and go to the fold. And this is my nose dart. Oops. This is my chin dart. Now I have these other two chin side darts. Just have to do these real quick. And one more. You see how fast that goes? You don't have to worry about marking it. You just cut those darts out. They're not going to need to be in the fabric anyway. Alright, so now that's our last dart. And now what we're going to do is we're going to line... I don't know why that didn't cut, but I'm going to get rid of it because it's hanging. Okay, now I'm going to uh, attach the side of the lining um, to the center of the lining. And if you'll notice, I have a mark there that's on the pattern. If you mark that and you line it up, you will end up with this right where it's supposed to be. And then I'm just going to do a little stitch across there just to hold it in place because if I don't it will scoot and then it won't be ending up it won't end up where I want it to be so now I have done the other side also so I'm going to now attach this lining 
to the the um, base fabric. Okay, <clears throat> so here's my base and here's my lining. I'm going to match the nose right there and I'm going to push the seam, the dart, the one way and the bottom dart the other way. But I'm still going to match them together. Now your lining is only going to come to the end here where that interfacing is. And um, the reason for that is that we're going to turn this. So I'm going to go from the top down center, center top, center to the to the end this is the slowest machine for back stitching I've ever seen okay now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pull the other side in do the same thing on this side to do anything with the raw edge of that uh, lining because you're going to end up with that uh, going right into the seam that's wrapping around it. Now the lining is just a little bit smaller than the outside and so I'm going to try to match them. I'm going to let let the rest of this fabric kind of bunch and I'm going to match them at the center again just like I did at the top and you can get those all of your seams get one uh, like where the darts are get the dart one going that way and the other one going this way I'm talking about above and below I'll show you So here is this dart going that direction and that dart going this direction. And then I'm going to take it from the other side and I'm going to finish this up. And it's easier to pull the one that's below away from you and the one that's above towards you because they just tend to work better that way. So again, I'm lining this up, and so now I have everything done together, okay? Now I'm going to put some wire up here in the nose part. Okay, now I'm going to put this pipe cleaner in the nose area. You could use a twisty tie, bread tie, garbage tie, bag tie. This is about four inches of a pipe cleaner. And um, in order to get over this pipe cleaner, I have to have a foot that has a little tunnel underneath. Otherwise, it's not going to move um, across, the fab uh, across that pipe cleaner. So I'm going to have a zigzag width of... 4.5 and the length is 1.4 you can it doesn't really matter about the length it you're just going to be encasing this with a zigzag and if you feel like you need to widen the stitch so that you don't hit the wire fine 
um, I find that it snugs up a little bit better if it's just barely hitting over top of the, the wire. Now, the wire is going, as you can see, the wire is going in the seam allowance. So, I have not made a casing. All I've done is I've laid it on the on the, the seam allowance. I'll show you up close. So, here's the seam allowance. See it better this way. There's the seam allowance of the top. That's the nose with one dart. And then I've just zigzagged across this pipe cleaner and now I'm going to okay, turn this. Now I'm going to turn this. And I think that it helps if you have pinking shears to just pink that across the bottom. It tends to take the curve a little better. And then I also pink this side, but I didn't do anything with this around the nose because I want that to be inside and a little more space there. So now I'm going to just take this, turn it right side out on the, the back ends, the sides, I should say. Then I'm going to turn the center. Okay. And now, you'll do yourself a favor if you go and press all of this so that the seams are on the edge, okay? And they'll be just slightly up from the edge. They'll be setting a little bit toward uh, the lining. It'll look a little bit like that. So I'm going to go press this, and then I'm going to come back and show you the last step. Okay, I have pressed this in, and now what I'm going to do, I also press this part down. You can see I press that in too, and I'm going to start at the end, because I'm just going to catch that. So that when I roll it up, it'll go right into that uh, fake casing. Okay, and so now I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm top stitching this. So I'm just following the edge of the seam. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the top. Now this one has the wire in it. So be careful that you are at least the presser foot edge away from the wire. So that you do not hit the wire. And I'm just going to make sure that those seams are going to stay in place. Again, I'm coming all the way to the outside. Okay, and now the last step. Well, I don't, I don't mean the last step. Last step is sewing, and then you're going to put your elastic in or your tie. I'm going to take this uh, end that's raw edge, get the thread out of there, and I'm going to meet meet this one raw edge to the raw edge of the lining and then I'm going to fold it over all the way to where it covers that lining okay and then I'm going to stitch and notice that I am real close to the edge of the seam I mean uh, the fold so that I will have enough space to um, to either weave a ribbon through it or a piece of elastic. And I'm going to do the other side. 
and then I'm going to get some elastic. Well, first I'll show you the ribbon because you may not have any elastic. It seems like that's such a shortage now. Um, shortage of elastic. Um, so, I'm going to show you first that you could run a piece of, of ribbon. I would use grosgrain ribbon or a cotton ribbon or you could even make some ties. Some people are using uh, knit. Uh, I'm going to put it on put the ribbon on a um, safety pin and I'm going to just push it in through that little casing and then as long as I want it and then I'm going to stitch right there in the center to secure it. Now if I was going to put some elastic in um, they they claim that seven inches is in, a good amount of elastic. I don't know. Everybody's different. The problem is is that it may be too loose or it may be too tight. But I want to make sure that I push my elastic in past that seam. Okay? So I'm going to make sure and I feel it right there. I'm going to stitch there and then I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to stitch on the other side the same way. And I'm going to follow the same pushing it in far enough so that it'll hold and that that's how you can insert the elastic so you're stitching across the elastic here or you're stitching in the center of the ribbon whichever one you want um, I will tell you that one of the things that I noticed that I could do if my elastic was a little loose so loose is better than not I could run a piece of ribbon into this piece of elastic and tie it in the back of my uh, head. So that is basically how you make the Patty Dunn face mask. Happy sewing!